on this computer and hope that my laptop, my district laptop, has enough to get us to the end. All right, so here we go. Um, hi, I'm Rebecca Weinkoop, and um, I, Ms. Chambers invited me to come share with you a little bit about what summer reading or what summer library services are going to look like at Eagle Staff. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and share with you a little bit about kind of my philosophy and vision for summer and what that looks like, but also kind of give you some like bare bones of what it might, of, of how what I've done can even just support what you go forth and do with your um, different communities. And so the whole idea here uh, started for me three years ago. This will be my third year of offering summer library services. And I've been a, a librarian in schools since my 19th year. And this was the first time when I was like, wait a minute, I have a brand new collection. I have kids that used it feverishly all year long and now I'm taking books away. Why am I doing that was kind of the question that I asked myself. And I went to my principal and I said, um, it doesn't make any sense to me. You know, like here I am, you're at that point 16 in my career. And I was like, just doesn't make sense to me that we would, we would um, limit access to our collections that we build for students and with students for, for three months out of the year. And so we started a summer library services. And the first two years, this was very much an in-person venture, but due to the current situation, we have had to really rethink what that looks like. Um, and one of the advantages I have is um, an administration that understands the life of, um, the, the importance of reading in the lives of our students and how the library supports that in both physical and more digital formats. And so, um, I am going to tell you a little bit about our summer reading theme for this year and kind of how I'm guided in this process. So the first question, um, and I, I will also preface this, I apologize, I feel a little scattered. I will preface this with saying that I think that we don't know yet what our jobs will look like in the fall. And you all are as well aware of this as I am that we have very little control who gets to eventually make those decisions. And so one of the things that I think is really important for us right now is to determine what services do we provide that are essential for our students and staff? What services do we provide that are essential for our communities moving forward, regardless of whether or not we're in building or out? And, um, and so for me, um, that, that, that number one service, right, is, is reading whatever format that takes. It can be digital, it can be in person, it can be with a print book in your hand, but really truly encouraging and supporting and valuing the reading lives of our students and supporting them in, in continuing to build that is, is for me the most essential service that I provide. Um, and so thinking first about what is essential and for me because reading is essential, um, we open up in the summers. And so a couple of things to think about. Choose a service model that is um, student and family centered, right? Think about the needs of your communities. You all know the students and the families you serve the best. You all know the students and families that are furthest from educational justice and what they would need um, and how you could support that. You can even scaffold services based upon the needs of the families. Um, but also as you do that, make sure that what you decide to do is something that you feel like you can manage. And um, by that, I mean, don't schedule services every week if, you're going to be, honestly, I would be resentful of doing work I wasn't being paid for and putting myself out there and, and, and feeling like it, maybe it wasn't valued. So, so do something that you think is manageable for you. There are different models. Um, we do four days in the summer. It roughly is every two weeks. It feels manageable to me. Um, and I try to do everything on those four days. You can, if you choose to, right? But you shouldn't have to. You could use your extra days for that purpose, but we all have plenty of other work this year that needs to happen during those extra days, so I wouldn't recommend it. It's not my recommendation. My recommendation is talk to your principal, talk to your communities, tell them you want to provide these services and see what can happen and what's available. Um, some of us are just willing to, some of us have more flexibility and um, don't need to worry about being paid and others of us just say, I'm not gonna do work, I'm not gonna get paid for. And that's a perfectly legitimate place to stand, um, a place to be. And so I just wanna make sure that whatever you choose to do, that that's manageable for you, for sure. 
Uh, make sure you choose a theme. It has to be fun. Like, go ahead and be corny. I love a good pun. Um, our first year of summer reading was donut. Forget to read. Donuts were everywhere. Our second year was summer reading, no problema. Um, and then this year, it's anything is possible at the Eagle Staff Library. So we're going with pups this year. And um, pause. And then promote your programs and provide. It's funny, I can't always see everything. Provide resources as available. Just a real quick like rundown for me. This is four days. This is what my four days look like for me. From 10 to 12, I will be outside in front of the school collecting books. Knowing that our students are continuing to check out books, knowing that it's gonna take families some time over the summer to find and get books in. Um, we have four days and the first, first two hours are book collection just out front of the school. This is drive-by, pick up, or drive-by drop-off. It's a one-way transaction only. One of the things that initially allowed me to, to begin to, to retrieve books from families was that I promised a one-way transaction and that I wasn't handing books at the same time as I was collecting books and possibly transmitting um, in that way. And so that's the first thing is one-way book collection. The second thing is a uh, maker's activity online. Uh, Tuesday, actually your model of the maker's um, Mondays that you were doing is something that encouraged me to do this. Um, I, haven't, I haven't really done a lot of this in my library services this spring with students. And this is something that kids love to do in the summer. So I wanted to bring it back and make sure we have the ability to do that. And one of the things that I think is so great is that um, certainly at Ballard, the makers activities they're doing, they're looking for um, activities that can be done with materials you generally have in the home, right? So you're not, you don't need special pens or a button maker, or whatever it happens to be. Um, and so there's that. Um, and then I'm going to do book delivery for three hours in the afternoon. Um, you know, based upon what uh, my current delivery load is like, because we've been delivering books to our students now for almost a month and a half, almost two months. Um, but based upon that, it's something I could get done in three hours um, with a little bit of help. And I have a team of teachers and my principal who are all on the delivery team. There's about 14 of us. And when we get a big order, we just, I put the, I get them in regions. I've divided our school region up into four um, at Eagle Staff on, interestingly enough, the furthest southwest I've gone, and mind you, it's not south, I understand that, but southwest from our school is down by the locks in Ballard, and Eagle Staff is all the way up on 90th and Aurora, as far east as almost Nathan Hale High School, as far north as Lakeside um, High School, and then as far Northwest as as Carkeek and up to 156. So we have this huge, huge area where we're delivering books. And so I do also I email families and I say, hey, you have books. Do you want to pick them up or do you want them to have them delivered? And I do. I have a, a handful of families that will just literally right now swing by my house, but in the summer could swing by the school in the afternoon and pick up books. Um, so I'm going to pause there for just a second because that was a lot of information and see if there's any questions at this point. Rebecca, it's Audra. Okay. Um, hi, would you be willing to send out whatever um, your promotional materials and your stuff around your book delivery, like how you, you know, how you organize that, organize that with your staff and how you promoted it to um, your community? Would you be willing to share that? Yeah, I'm, um, I'll have to think about what that looks like. <laughs> and, and the only reason I say that is I have initial, initial, an initial proposal that I submitted to my principal, our ed director, and SPS that allowed me to collect books mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, and that was a big deal at the time. It's not so much now, right? Right. Um, as far as promoting this with families, basically what you're looking at is my current, my, my primary mode of promotion and communication with families. Um, identifying the days and the times and what will happen during those times. Um, I will we'll get into a little bit um, further into this, a little bit more about how we, how we communicate that. Um, okay. As far as with staff, I just sent an email and I said, I have 350 books sitting in my living room and our kids want them. <laughs> Are you willing to help? I did start small. The very first deliveries I did, I, I recruited just from our language arts teachers. Um, and, um, and that was great. 
but it's not sustainable. Like you really can't expect three or four people to do it every time. And so the next time I just sent an all staff and I said, I give you, you know, I give a really, it's super easy. I give you the address, I give you a region, you go deliver books. You knock on the door or ring a doorbell, you wave to the kid from at least six feet and say, enjoy your book. And um, overwhelmingly, the response has been spectacular. And our teachers are like actually like clamoring to do it again because it's the most contact and the most like interaction with students and families they've had in a really long time. Um, so that's been great. So I don't have anything formal as far as the teacher part of it. Um, but yeah, if, um, Audra, as we go forward, if there's still some unanswered questions, let me know and I'll make sure. Mm -hmm. that awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions at this point? Okay. So this form, we'll go forward. Um, this is the back. This is like a, a quarter of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Um, I literally print them up on cardstock. Um, for every book I deliver, I include one of these in it. It has the dates, the times, the activities. It has the school started. If for some reason they get kicked out in the summer. Our eighth graders are allowed to use our library until they're in high school. So if they, if they want to continue using these services but need access to the Schoology page because they get bumped over at a certain point, then I want them to be able to get back in. So we include the Schoology code, but also for our upcoming, um, our rising fifths into sixth, I want them to have access to the Schoology page. But as far as like, what does summer reading promotion look like? Like, I really truly just want it to be fun and I want as few barriers as possible to participating. So um, we share widely with our community. We encourage feeder school participation and we remove as many barriers as possible. For me, that does mean I'm, I am printing up copies. We send it out via school messenger. We post it on the library's um, Schoology page, on this community's Facebook page, on my Instagram and Twitter, like putting it everywhere possible that we possibly can to get it out there. And really truly, this is the way I've done it for the last three years and it's been really great because kids say, well, what book do I have to read? You, I don't, tell you what books you have to read. Well, do I have to read a book? Nope. It literally says, um, this one says for every book you read, have a parent or garden, um, read it. Um, I have a, this, I have an updated version that says for every item you read. I just changed that a little bit. Um, I actually went, um, I met with Claire Scott over at Lincoln with some students from Eagle Staff that are going to Lincoln about a week ago. And um, looking at her summer reading list, she's using a Padlet and in her summer reading list, she has, it's very multimodal. It has, um, you know, online comics and it has podcasts and it has, you know, lots of different ways in which to access. And so I changed the language to for every item that you read and, you know, reading is listening, reading is, li is looking, reading, you know, reading takes a lot of different forms. So just wanting it to be, and students can print up as many of these and submit them as often as they want. And, and bring them to me in the fall. Um, and that's kind of, this is, the, this is the promotional part of what we're doing. Rebecca? Yep. Can you share sure. just really quickly what School Messenger is? Yes. So School Messenger is like, is a, the robocall system. That's the, you know, when, when a principal needs to contact everyone in the school, they can make a phone call or an email. And we use the school messenger for email purposes. Um, we rarely do the phone calls because that kind of heightens parents' anxiety a little bit because they think something terrible has happened. Um, <clears throat> but we, my principal is, is happy to send um, an email with any information that I need about the library um, via school messenger. And what that does is it gets the most, it gets us the, the highest number of, of families we can without actually making that phone call. And so I use that. Even, even my messaging, your messaging in Schoology isn't gonna get as many parents. Um, your messaging, it, it's, it's the way to get the most parents, um, the information that you need is to use that school messenger. Um, for me, it's, it's just a matter of sharing it with my principal and she puts it up. Any other questions at this point? Okay. Is school is school messenger what we traditionally have called in the past, like a robo a robo email home or a robo call home? Exactly. It's just the the actual software. But you sent an you sent an email, not a phone call. I did because it has the document in it. Yeah. So it allows families to come back to it if they save the email, if they print it, whatever it happens to be. It gives them access to it in a different way. The, the phone call hangs up, and then you're done. Um, you know, if you were 
if you wanted to just promo it and you wanted to do both, right? A really exciting, energetic phone call home. Hi, this is Ms. Bell and I'm so excited to make sure you know about and, you know, do that. I think that's fine. Um, you know, in, in my experience, the robocalls are not as well received. Families feel rushed. They don't answer the calls. Or they hang up as soon as they answer it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the, the email gives them at least the option, um, you know, depending, you know, to, to, to save it, to, to print from it, whatever they need to do. Well, cool. okay. Um, multimodal guide. One of the things that, um, you know, in, in our careers, right, we have these ups and downs, right, where we think, oh, I'm going to do a list, and no, I don't want to do a list, and, you know, I, I have been on this continuous cycle of where I am with student voice and where I am with the idea of lists um, and where I am with really truly encouraging the independent reading lives of our students and where I am right now, right? And everybody's gonna be at a different spot in this particular cycle, right? Some of it is we're responding to our kids. Some of it is working with our classroom teachers. Some of it is the community that we serve, right? So find where you are and just at least offer a guide for families. So often not having anything is too daunting for families as far as choosing. Um, sometimes, right, having too much is just as daunting, but at least having an option for families as far as um, what you would want them to, or where you would send them or what you would recommend for them to read. Um, I know Stacia does a really great Bulldogs read where she really works very closely with her, her library committee to make sure students are recommending books. Um, Tuesday does the same thing. Many of you do things like that. For, for me, for the past three years, we've been a project-lit chapter, the project-lit community. Many of you have heard me talk about in the past. Um, but one of the, I was, I was drawn to the project-lit list, particularly because one, it's created by students in Nashville, Tennessee, but I was really drawn to their basic core tenets. Um, some of those include to elevate and amplify voices of people of color and authors of color and characters of color, um, to rewrite the narrative of what's deemed worthy of academic study. And like, I was just drawn to this. Um, and so for, for Eagle staff, our, our guide, our recommendation for families, if they ask for books is, is anything on the project lit list would be a fantastic choice for you and your family. Um, it's allowed us to really change the conversations. It's allowed students to see themselves in the books that they're reading. Um, and it's been really, it's been really great. Um, I do wanna put a huge plug in for um, not feeling overwhelmed by this process of, of creating this guide or this list that you would want to recommend. There's so many lists out there. If you, your emails are bombarded right now with this list and that list and this list and parents are feeling the same way, but to really not like, it doesn't have to be, it's not mine. This is not my list. I didn't make this list, but I absolutely agree with and, and appreciate the process through which the books are selected. So I use this list. Um, doesn't mean I always will, but I do for now. And um, it's something we use in our language arts classes as well. But you have colleagues that are creating incredible lists. There's no, I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you there's no colleague, and if they do, you send them to me. But who isn't willing to share their list with you to say, absolutely, have my list, this is great. Um, I mentioned Claire Scott's list earlier. She's using a Padlet for, this is how she's sharing this list with her students. And it is so multimodal that it gives kids lots of access points to the library. And that's really the intent of Summer Library Services is to continue to provide access to the library. Um, one of the things that um, we want to make sure, though, is that if you have these guides, if you have these lists that you're going to use through your summer library services to make sure parents and students have access to how they can get the books, right? Understand what's there. The picture on this page is just a screenshot from my um, Project Lit Challenge folder on Schoology, and um, I'll give you a little tour of that in a minute. But the, the intent here is to to eliminate as many barriers as possible between student and what they want to listen to or read. Okay. As you move forward, right, and think about access um, and how you would communicate this, just encourage everyone to use the tools you already have available to you. Um, 
I am, this is my confession. I didn't use Schoology before we got sent home. I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't use it with my students. I felt like I had the tools that I needed and, and I didn't use it. Um, but the truth of the matter is my practice and my ability to communi communicate with students has increased so dramatically that I feel really stupid, honestly, for not having used Schoology before. Um, I, I did, you know, honestly, I came from, I was at Bagley for five years and I, I didn't find the value in it at the elementary level. And so I resisted it when I went back to the middle school and high school level. Um, I also know that a lot of elementary folks are, um, are using different tools for things like this. Um, and so you have those tools available as well. Um, but just use what's already available to you. Um, library link, everyone has library link now. Do not, do not delay our students and families. This doesn't stop because school stops. This is a year round, 12 months every year service that's available to families. And it's so helpful to be able to place holds on Libby to download immediately from Hoopla. And I know we've talked about others. Those are just the top two that I promote. Um, and just to have access to the lists we can create in the Biblical Commons for sure is really helpful. It just helps families navigate a little bit better. Um, use your social media accounts. Uh, when, when, when we put it out in many different formats in lots of different places, people see it differently. And then we already talked about School Messenger. Any questions here? Awesome. Okay, so I am going to really quickly give you a just a super quick brief um, tour of what my Schoology page looks like. Um, just so that you can see that only because um, sorry, I have to find it. It's sometimes helpful to see what students might see when you're doing this. And so this is my Schoology page and I, it allows me to put on my calendar my summer library days. You can see it says summer library services on June 24th is the first day we're um, going to have services. Um, and then I'm putting at the top at this point, right, last week of school, I'm putting at the, top the things that families need to know specifically about summer library services. So in the summer library services folder, I have an explanation. I have a link to the video that explains how to take, how to place holds, because holds are essential for um, and knowing what kids need. Um, and it's the most efficient way at this point to do that. And then I do link to the documents that I've already showed you including we made some bookmarks that students could print out for reading plans. Our language arts teachers are using that for their reading plans. Um, in addition to that, um, I have a link here to explain. Otter, this is a little bit maybe about what you were talking about earlier about how do you share this. This is how I explained initially to our families how they could get books while school is closed. Um, I did increase under um, our patron um, requirements. I did increase holds to 20 so that students can place holds. Um, that seemed necessary. One, because I want them to be able to take 10 or 15 at a time. If, if a family's looking at checking out on the 24th of June and not coming back until the end of the school year, I, or until the start of the school year, like I want them to be able to take a summer's worth of reading material, um, but also recognizing that, you know, some kids are going to be waiting for some things and have access to the others right away. So this does kind of outline how um, we were getting started. We call it Eagle Staff Prime. I've called it Eagle Staff Prime um, since the first year. And during school, that means free delivery every day. So if a student has a place on hold, a book placed on hold and it comes in, my first period TA is deliver books to kids in class every day. And so that's what we call it, um, Eagle Staff Prime. So um, that's the first thing. The um, other thing is this video just explains to students how to do that. And I'm happy if you have specific requests, it's a little weird to send out like, here's my video. I'm happy to send it out, but it is Eagle Staff specific. If you wanted, for example, like the slide deck that I used to create the video, um, that would be, I'm happy to share that. You could just email me directly if you wanted that. Um, the other thing, in addition to, Promoting the summer reading programming, reminding students how they actually get books. This is just the project lit um, 
folder that I had mentioned, this is my guide, right? When families ask, what should my kids be reading? I'm like anything on Project Lit, quite frankly, anything they want to. But if you can't make a decision or you don't know how to navigate it, here, here we go. We've got. And one of the things that um, we actually do is I started this year as the new Project Lit titles were being released, I started recording the first chapter of every book, a read aloud, right? I'm well within fair use. Um, it's published on YouTube. It's easy for kids to get to, but it allows them to listen to the first chapter of all of the new books in the Project Lit um, list. This list will also be in the fall, so we'll have that as well. But that was something that I started to do during um, our stay at home order because students were really responding to being able to listen to and, and just get a different sense. Of, it's like a first chapter Friday, but it allows you to just promote the books that are on your list. Um, also, sorry, I didn't have to go back that far. In the Project Lit folder, um, I learned something brand new today for me. <laughs> um, and that was how to create a list in SPL, right? Once you're in, and so what I did is I went in and I created a list for um, the Project Lit Middle Grade. And I put in both the ebook and the audiobook here. And, and I included them here. Um, Ms. Chambers walked me through this process this morning. This was not something I had done. Um, but once I knew the first two things to do, it was super easy to get in and create a list. And so now I can share this link with my families directly if they want access to either the young adult or the middle grade titles. Super easy, super slick, and it's great for families to be able to see them all in one place. Um, I did decide this year to make sure that I separated the middle grade and the young adult. I think it's just, it was just, I don't normally do that, but it felt like the right thing to do. I have no other justification for why I might have done that than that. Um, and then in addition to that, initially before I had learned how to do the lists, um, what I had done is gone through and just created a folder that allowed me to show, whoops, wrong one, sorry. To show which um, project lit titles were available in which audiobook or e-format, right? So even if, even if you can't open your library this summer for books to go in and out, right? Even if we can't do that, we can continue to provide services to students and families in this kind of format because we all now have access to so many rich resources through Library Link. And I think it's super important. I was looking today, um, some of the titles, right, that have like 24 holds and only three copies I do know that SPL is looking very, very carefully at how many copies do we have of eBooks and audiobooks, how many holds are waiting and do we need to buy more? And they're being super responsive to that. Um, and that's been really great. And so I encourage my kids all the time, place your holds, place as many holds as you can, keep placing holds because that's how I know to buy new books. That's how SPL knows to buy new books and move forward. Can I, can I say something about that too, Rebecca? You bet. Um, I sent my list to my Seattle Public Library in Wally, and he is getting it to his buyer to buy more copies of that because he knows there's going to be more hits. So that might be worth something doing as well. Like whatever list you have, send it to your SPL contact, and uh, there might be a chance to have more purchase. Hey, Stace, you're echoing like crazy. Yeah, I have no idea why. Because I'm not doing anything differently than I've ever done. See, now I'm not echoing. Uh, Rebecca, you also have a request to show people how to make that, that list on Ooh, SPL. I can do that now. Yeah, okay. so I will say this. It took me only three text messages, literally three messages, and that's how easy Rebecca was able to do it. So it really is simple. Yep. So let me figure out really quickly how I get back. So I need to log into my SPL. But when I do, if I go to lists, um, and log in. Oops, I have to log in. I don't have my card with me. Hold on. Uh, Rebecca? Yeah? You can log in with your, your, your student ID or your teacher ID. Yeah, I know. I just forgot it. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Rebecca, do you want to use mine? While she's waiting, I just wanted to say one thing about these lists, too. 
Um, I've started using these when kids ask for recommendations and I, before mm -hmm. like emailing them to kids, like the titles and like copying and pasting summaries. Now I just send them one of these lists. I create a list for them and I have been able to reuse the list. Like a kid will ask me for yep. dystopian romance and I'm like, I sent it to Bobby, but now I'm going to send it to Susie. Um, right. Mm -hmm. It's been like awesome because then they can check it out right away. And folks, where it says search by, you can instead of say keyword, you can put lists in. So if Rebecca actually puts in Eagle Staff, Rave, you know, Eagle Staff Ravens, or Robert Eagle Staff, then when they search her, they can search for her list. Yes. So here I am. Thank you for waiting. I apologize. Um, you can see my published lists are down below. And in order to do this, all I do is create a new list. I'm sorry, on the SPL website, there was an area where you pressed list. Is that where you, where you got to this page? I'm going to go back. Hang on just a second. So if you start just at the Seattle Public Library's website, it's a little hard for me to see where everything is. So Rebecca, you can just go up to the top and put my account. Yep. It's a little, sometimes things are covered. <laughs> so I'm in my account. When I click on my name, down here at the bottom under my collections, it gives me lists. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and when I click on lists, it allows me to go in and click create a new list. Um, you really, guides and recommendations is the preferred one, but you could do either. They basically look the same. Uh, and then you add a title here. So I'm going to say we're doing. Um, okay, so now I have a title. All I do is click Add a List. I can search the title here for stamped, for example. <laughs> and once that pulls up, you can decide which ones you want to add. Um, I know Tuesday, you just do the ebook. Um, I've been doing ebook and audio. it just depends on the list you're creating. Did you want to speak to that, Tuesday? Uh, it just just know this that if you want to do ebook and audiobook, you do have to put both in. Yeah. Otherwise, you have, you have to. So that's just, or you have to click on the. The student has to know to click on the cover and then be able to go to the other one. So you can also go back in and add that. And do you only search by title or can you search by subject or genre or? You can search, it's just like searching the catalog. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have lots of options. Um, once I do that, um, it saves it. I'm gonna leave this one as a draft because I'm not ready to publish it. But if I go back to my lists, you can also go back and edit your lists and add to them. And that's totally fine as well. But this is 19 years, been doing this a long time. I learned this today because Tuesday took a few minutes to send me a couple of texts and it's, it's fantastic. I do. Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, it's Audra. I just wanted to um, note that I'm working on a list of um, teacher recommendations and I noticed you could put an annotation. So that's yeah. really cool because I'll put like who recommended it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this because <clears throat> that is the end of the, the formal presentation and um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I see the chat has 48 things in it. Tuesday, what do we need to go back to? Uh, nothing that I can tell off the top. You might want to just talk a little bit about the process of how you're pulling books or the, how people put books on hold from yeah. your video. Yeah, so actually I'll go back really quickly just in case this is helpful. Um, when you go into your catalog, for example, and I look up here, it allows me to see what books I have on hold. And so here it gives me a list of the materials I need to pull. So when I go in on Friday, because for me it just happens to be Friday is a, a, a predetermined day that I, um, or for example, when I go in next Wednesday, which is my first day of summer library services, um, I will spend two hours outside collecting books and putting them in a cart. For me, um, as per my original proposal, those books stay on the cart for at least one week. 
And families know that. I say to them, we don't touch these books right away um, in order to keep everyone safe and healthy. We're letting them sit. I know there's been different models. For us, it's just a week. Um, that allowed me to do an on off. It allowed me to check in one day. It allowed me to check out another day. Um, you can determine what works best for you. I just highly recommend you just write it all down. Make sure your parents can come back and reference it. Make sure your admin knows what you're doing. Um, that may be, I know Mary Bannister asked a really important question about how do we get into our buildings if we don't have keys or if our custodians don't like us to be there. Um, that also may be a way where you can say, here's my plan. Here are the days that I will be in the building. And hopefully, you know, sometimes just even knowing what it's going to look like is um, something that helps kind of overcome um, whatever, whatever is happening there at that point. At that point. So um, I would then pull these books. I actually do go through and um, you can see that some kids like Dylan, Dylan has placed a bunch of holds. Dylan knows that he's going to get all these books on one day and bring them back. Uh, Willa has also done the same thing. And so, you know, it's at this point, my, my current holds are just a few kids, but who have a lot of books that they want to check out. Um, I do have some days where like six kids um, place 10 holds and then 45 kids place one hold, right? It just kind of depends on the day and what's happening in their language arts classes and how they plan for the summer. So, um, the other thing that I want to throw out there is I'm not, I don't currently have built in a pickup time, a time that would allow families to come pick up. But if I, if I were back at elementary, at the elementary level, I might tag on like an hour to the end of my day where I'm back out on the sidewalk with a cart of books that I've just pulled for kids and be out there ready to check those out for kids so that if families wanted to walk, you know, so many, not all of them, but many of our elementary school families are walking to and from school and have that capacity. Your, your draw zone is not quite as large um, for most, but not all, but that might be an option based upon the community you serve. You can decide like the best way. You don't have to deliver every one of these books to a doorstep. You can think of ways to um, allow families to come get them from you if it's curbside Great. So Rebecca, I missed the beginning. You have been delivering all day. So you are only there for collection. Then you get the requests and then you deliver them to their homes. Right. So Rebecca, at a high school level, I'm hoping that children can drive. <laughs> uh, and so, and because Ballard High School did uh, caps and gowns, mm -hmm. we have a sort of expectation that we kids know and the families know how to drive in. Yeah. I'm going to ask them to hold a piece of paper up with their name mm -hmm. the same way they, we've kind of done uh, computers. Um, I'm going to have, and tell me if you think this is a good idea ahead of time, because they put the holds, I'm going to have it in a bag. I'm going to have my llama sticker because I, I bar always borrow Rebecca's um, <laughs> um, themes from the year before so I can use all her good ideas and her marketing materials. Uh, and so I'm going to slap that on it. And then I'm going to have them alphabetized in a Xerox box, be able to pull one out put it on the cart, push it over, or put it in their trunk. Yeah. Um, so that's exactly. my plan, and I don't have delivery. Um, so that, I don't know. I haven't done it yet, Sue. Um, maybe you're asking Rebecca if she puts her stuff in plastic bags. I don't know. But that's my plan, because if they want more than one book, I also want to just try to have my hands not be on, or hands be on as many books. Do you put your books in plastic bags, Rebecca? Is the question. I don't, but I do wear gloves when I do it. Um, and, and again, I'm going one way and, and only one way, right? So my, with my collections in the morning, the gloves that I wear in the morning and I'm collecting books go in the trash can, the cart sit until I'm done. <laughs> if I'm delivering or I'm handing out books to students, I would be wearing gloves. We do something similar, like we just tie books together when um, kids have more than one. And then I just stick their name and their address. And then I, again, I have like my little card that's printed up that has on both sides that sits in every book. So um, lots of options for that, for sure. And again, you know, the, one of the very first things I said is you, you are the one who knows best what, what's going to work for your community and for you. It still has to work for you, right? Like in the end. Um, but I think this idea that, that 
we know how important it is for students to, to keep reading. Our teachers know how important it is for students to keep reading, and we have the capacity to, to build this into our services and, and, and potentially, honestly, at some point down the road, like actually make sure it's available for all students, right? Like it's something that we could think about in the future that we could systematize and make sure it's equitable and, and have a model in place. And the more of us that are willing to, to try it and the more of us that are willing to collect data on that and share that information, not just with your principals, but with Darcy and, and with the people who make decisions, um, we just have a really unique, we're in a unique position this summer to show how we can continue to serve our students if we're not able to be at school in the same way. Can you share some of your data with us? How many kids um, participate? How many books you circulate? Anything uh -huh. like that? So probably the easiest, I mean, the quickest and easiest way to do that right now is if I go into my library information and I go into statistics and I look just even at the last, let's say four months. <laughs> Um, this is where we're at. Um, it includes March. So March is a big number, right? Because, or at least a bigger number than the rest because, um, because it was partly when we were still, you can see that April was very low. We were closed. <laughs> there was, that was me, basically me going, oh, I could check this book out to myself. Um, and then May was when we first we that was like the very tail end of May is when we first like really started checking books out to kids. And then June, we pushed out our summer library services and families like really, truly, I didn't make 872 deliveries. I, you can see there were 102 holds placed. If you compare that to the amount of books circulated, like that's a more accurate number. It's a lot of, a um, lot of multiple students placing holds and a lot of stuff hasn't been, um, anything that had a hold on it prior to, I'm also delivering. So if there were holds previously and kids have been waiting for books, I just send them an email. Do you still want this book? And they say yes, and I take it to them. But this is the, what I have so far, Mary. I don't have anything more formal than that. Um, Rebecca, can yeah. you address how you um, first, though, targeted students for this from educational justice? Yeah. So when we first, uh, my principal came to me and said, our PTSA has some money that they were planning on spending on end of the year items. Do you have any ideas? And I said, yes, we should buy books for kids. Like I want them to have books and the safest way possible is to buy them and let them keep them. And so I asked for $6,000. In the process, um, in working with my local bookstore, Finney Books, um, he said, hey, I have a donor who has, um, would like to buy 50 books for kids. Is that something your school could use? And I said, absolutely. So. Um, I went to our language arts teachers. We have a CSIP cohort, which are identified students, students identified that we know um, are furthest from educational justice. And we worked really hard one-on-one -on -one with those um, students and families to let them choose whatever they wanted. And those were the first, the first 50 deliveries we made. Um, and then we started using this grant money that we had. Um, the, the thing that I found out really improved not just the holds being placed but the circulation of materials was also that um hang on just a second but taking you okay um the thing that uh, helped was when i i can i can think of the students that i know there are obstacles for getting books, right? Or that they wouldn't ever, honestly, I know they would love to read, but they would never think of placing a hold and messaging them on Schoology or making a quick phone call, um, you know, even just a few every day. They're like, oh yeah, I did want to read that book. And then they place a hold and I walk them through that and I give them a link to Schoology to help them, to help facilitate that. And so that was actually something that was really helpful, but also not expecting to do it all by myself. I, I really, it's not something that we, um, could expect to do all by ourselves. I need the help of my classroom teachers. I need the support and the help of my principal um, in, in doing this work because it's a tremendous amount of work and, and I do rely heavily on them for that. So once we'd ensured initially, right, that all of our students in our CSIP cohort um, had books, and this was about 75, 80 kids initially, um, then we opened it up to the rest of our students. Um, 
and then still continue to send those those personal emails. Um, I have a student whose father's been really sick, who was one of my library TAs, um, and she wanted to read the Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, and I knew she did, and so I emailed her, and she happened to be in the hospital for a little while, and dad was still really sick, but you know, we were able to make that connection, and she and I have just been emailing back and forth pretty regularly, but more so about like, just checking in on her, right? And I know we're all doing that. We're, we're trying to keep in touch with our students and, and support them in the best way possible. But it's also helpful to have teachers helping with that, right? And, and also students feel a little overwhelmed too if everyone in the life is like, are you okay? Do you need a book? Seven people are asking them that and they're like, enough already. So we're trying to, trying to balance that and make sure we're not overwhelming them on that end. Um, but definitely it's, it's a team effort for sure. Rebecca, is your principal supporting this work this summer um, by compensating you financially? Yes, um, in a number of ways. So, um, I mean, I, I, sorry if that's too I, personal, but I think that's something to no, know. No, I think it's, it's important. You already went over it, Stacia. Oh, yeah. sorry. I was late to the party. No, no, it's okay. And I, but I think it's worth repeating because I think that, that there, I wouldn't, I'm willing to say I, I would do some of these days without being paid. Not everybody feels that way. And that's a perfectly reasonable and legitimate place to come from. It's absolutely reasonable to say I should be paid for my work, right? Totally. Um, I happen to be, we got the, um, the grant, the, the levy grant. We're one of um, the few North End schools that did. And so she actually built our summer library program and service grant. So that's how I'm being compensated. Um, not everybody has the grant, um, but there's also no reason. Honestly, this is one of those things, and I, I, Darcy's with us in this, but I know that, you know, there's this opportunity this summer for librarians to sign up to be at lunch hours to distribute books to kids, right? Clearly, somebody recognizes now that librarians have an important role to play in the reading lives of students, right? If we have models, if we continue to build models throughout the district, now they've said, hey, we'll pay you for your work, right? <laughs> so for, for delivering the Seattle Super Readers book. So we're like a little bit closer every time to actually maybe making this a, a system change for our students and our families. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of really great possibilities. But um, Stacia, just, just to reiterate, right, it, it does have to be something that's manageable by you. I would encourage you to ask your principals to pay if you'd like to do it and give them the reasons for it. It's hard to deny the reasons for, for doing this. Rebecca, there are some people on this call whose yeah. principals are not allowing their buildings to be open at all. Yeah. So there's, there's just, not, we're working with not even getting paid we're working yeah. with not even opening. Yeah, and I think I mentioned earlier, right, like we have a, a pretty great capacity through Library Link to build structures for families to continue to support them in their reading lives, even if we can't open our doors. Does that make sense? It would also be very um, beneficial to see the proposal that you gave your director so that some of the people whose principles are um, the obstacle right now can see how it was approved via you, your principal, sure. your, right? I am happy to send that out. Um, that's, that proposal was super specific, but the language and the intent and the reasoning behind it is, is what it fuels the rest of it. So as long as that works for everyone. I just, I appreciated that because you sent it to me, Rebecca, and I just adapted it to, yeah. for my School in my situation, I'm trying to convince him just to allow me to do one day, just to even open my building and allow me to do it. So, but I really appreciated the language and that. Can, I, I do apologize. I was at school and so I was late to late to this. Can I ask two specific questions? A, I know that you you mentioned you showed how you're having kids put put books on hold, and that's primarily how, what you're using to do the holds. Um, are you also? I didn't catch what you might have said at the beginning, are you also sending out like an Office 365 form and allowing them to request books that way? But like, I would imagine you would have to honor the holds in the catalog first because that's like. Yeah, I, I am not using anything other than holds in the catalog. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. so holds in the catalog. And 
if just because you've been doing this for a while now, if I'm looking at potentially only having one day that I can do like curbside pickup, I'm obviously going to advertise it a lot ahead of time. Get holds and continue to advertise it. But would you allow kids to do, um, to do, I, I'm hoping to do it on the day that they distribute yearbooks to students this summer, because that's going to be late. Would you allow kids to do like on the spot requests? Or do you think that that to, in your, as you're wrapping your mind around having done it, like, is that a nightmare? Because then you're running in and saying, oh, we don't have that now. What do you need? And you're trying to pick out, like, is there too much of a backup of kids waiting? And like, I, I can, I imagine that would really back things up. I, I mean, Stacey, your library is pretty close to your front door. Mine is not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Real, I'd have to like run upstairs, back to the middle of the building, run back. Yeah. Like I, I can't imagine. And I know that anytime they're setting up these lines for pickups or drop-offs, it's about moving people through quickly. Yes. People park and, and sit and wait. And so um, I, I wouldn't, I personally would not do. Okay. On Just just and you know and i think the, the key then is to be really reaching out to families like you were saying with personal emails ahead of time saying i haven't heard from you but i really want to get you some books and maybe even making it a possibility saying hey if you can't show up for this one day yeah. have, maybe having like some of your kids for this from educational justice saying i'll deliver them to you right for sure yeah for sure okay thank you yeah Rebecca, I'm just curious how you manage, you, you said you allow them to put up to 15 books on hold, is that correct? 20. 20. Mm -hmm. So now, how do you manage, and this is probably a very silly question, but I'm just trying to figure out how you manage the return of all of that, like what vessel do you use if they're returning the curbside? Mm -hmm. How do you store that? And you said you don't touch it again for another week, like where do you store like I'm just curious I have carts I put them on carts um I know that when, when Ballard did their big I mean they were collecting textbooks and books and books and books and books they used you know the big blue recycle bins that have wheels on them like being just for creative about where books could sit for a week is is what you know I was was using okay okay thank you Does that makes sense yeah 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 I, I mean I, I literally, I have the very, very tiny library, so I was just trying yeah. to, we, we, you know, way to put all of that if I did. Oh, I totally understand. Yeah, for me, it was, it was carts, um, but I, I do know, right, that, like, anything on wheels <laughs> at that point, mm -hmm. they don't have to be perfect and organized. They just need to be in something right. that you can move easily yeah, um, that's into your true. library, or quite frankly, even with a small building, into the hallway until you can get to them again. I... I, one of the things that I'm just super anxious about is I am like covered in piles of books and I know we haven't even, we haven't even gotten all the books back and I, I, that is something that we are going to have to address as librarians. There's a lot of work we just can't do right now. Um, and, but I'm also willing to, to cross that particular bridge when I come to it and, and figure out that problem as I get to it. My, my, my biggest concern right now, my, my biggest hope honestly, is that we can, we can find ways to get books in kids' hands. Thank you. Yeah. And Rebecca, yeah. At, um, at Ballard, we did a sign up genius. And so staff members came in. And so for the last three weeks, I've had people doing inventory and shelving. So I don't have any piles. That's great. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. and so I just, I want to reiterate, if you're pushing out books, you need to figure out how to get them back, back into, because otherwise that will be a nightmare. Because then the next round, when they try to check them out, you don't know what you have, what you don't. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What other questions might be lingering? What are the, I'm going to throw it out there. What are the things, what are the obstacles for you that we haven't touched on yet? Like what, what might still be an obstacle that I'm not sure how to, to approach or deal with. What's stopping you? Yeah. Excellent question. Somebody at my door. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Tootsie, take over.
<laughs> I'm back. Right. I can um, see. Um, I can see definitely um, doing where you send the list for um, to the Seattle Public Library. You know, the library link mm -hmm. and books that way. I think the obstacle in my building is just um, getting uh, permission to be in the building. Right. Um, I will say it's helped, been a really super helpful that Rebecca's done it already and that I see her success and I've seen Mary Bannister doing it and I've seen Shelly Macer doing it and I'm like, why are we not doing it? And then especially, and I would suggest this as your verbiage, we do not know how the fall will look. So when you say to your principal, do you want to try everything new in the fall? Or would you like to have some success? And then re mm -hmm. remind them, do you remember how frantic your parents were when we all went and, and we're all in closure? How nice would it have been to actually have a system for books? If we can do it for a restaurant, we can do it for a book. And I just keep saying that to my principal and he's like, you know, you're right. I'm like, yeah. So I just keep going back to if this is all we like, we have no idea what next year's gonna look like, but practicing now is really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be really, it's gonna be really important that we have models in place. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, honestly, not, not theoretical, not we think we can do this, but I've been doing this. Here's what's worked, right? And like I said, not everybody, or not everyone's example is gonna be I'm delivering books, right? That physically, honestly, for some is not going to be something you can do, and that's okay, right? But what are the other ways in which we can serve our students? And we need to be able to show people right away. Here's how we're, here's how we are doing it, not how we think we could, for sure. Okay, well, I think I apologize for a few interruptions. It is kind of weird working from home. <laughs> Rebecca, can you um, just um, make this link available? Or oh, maybe it's me because it's my computer. It probably is. I'm happy okay. to post it. Uh, okay. I mentioned, yeah, if Tuesday, we'll figure that out. Okay. But yes, of course, I'm happy to make it available. And it, it might be nice as well if there's anybody on this call who needs a mentor or a partner. I know that like some of the delivery model that Rebecca has been doing, Stacia has done it as well. Um, I know that Shelly Meister is not on this call, but she's done it. Um, so, it, and, and if you have not collected books back yet, I'm, I wonder what you're up to. But, uh, but if you, if, if sometimes it's nice to do it with someone and to like bounce ideas off of, I definitely looked at Rebecca's um, video to put how to put books on hold. And I did mine slightly different because we go in differently in high school. Um, use a website more than we do the Seattle schools one. we use Ballard's. Um, but it was super helpful to look at her video to make mine. And then mm -hmm. and then Stacia helped me like come up with ideas to make my video. You know what I mean? Like, so um, we'll be happy to um, support. I do, I didn't think of this sooner and I should have, and I apologize. If you are at all interested in looking, right, at any of the information that, um, I have posted on my Schoology page. This is, this is the join code. You can see that, this access code here. You're welcome to, um, to add, add yourself to, the, to our library's um, Schoology page, for sure. <laughs> we covered a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and if you are overwhelmed at all by even the concept of a list or doing a list, and you're secondary, I would absolutely jump on Rebecca's train and just do Project Lit. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. It's, you could be part of a chapter. You would have a buddy to work with. I mean, it's, it's a, I just, and if you're not interested, and I know this was in the chat, if you're, if you're elementary, the list that has been printed on our website about Black Lives Matter would be a fantastic start as just a recommendation. Mm -hmm. And so don't get caught up in the details of like, oh, I haven't done this, I haven't done that, right? This is the perfect way to begin. And if you're like, well, now's not really a good time. It's not going to be a good time ever. <laughs> right? So I want you to imagine now the fall and frantic children and frantic parents. And what better way than for you to have 
library be so amazing that that you've already established this as a norm? Yeah. Is D, I just am curious, I, you cut out there for a little bit when you were talking about um, a video tutorial on how to place holes at the elementary level. Did you say someone has that available or not? Yes. Rebecca has one. Oh, oh, you mean at an elementary level? At an elementary level, yes. Um, I don't know if one has been done in an elementary, oh. but Rebecca is actually, hers would be what I would assume elementary would follow. And Rebecca, would you make that available to us by any chance, or is that just on your it, school? It actually is. Let me, I will. Here's see, the, the only thing is it's, it is, it says Eagle Staff, Eagle Staff, Eagle Staff. Right, right. But as long as we have yeah. that as a guide and then we create our own. Yes, yeah, it's so much me, easier. Just really quickly, I'll drop the link in Perfect. the chat. Give me just a second. And I already dropped mine in the chat. Um, so you can see the difference that Rebecca and I do. Sure, thank you. And my, and and you y'all like I made my midi video once. I stuttered in it. <laughs> yeah. I, if I had to do back, I would do. But here's my thing: if you spend seventy thousand hours doing a video, you'll never do it, right? And it's any it's raw, but it's how my kids go in, and I I was kind of quirky, and it's two minutes and forty six seconds. That's it. Mm -hmm. 